Hi, thank you for clicking on the video and I hope everyone is doing really well today. Before jumping into the story, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. So today I'm going to be telling you the story of how I was rejected by a treatment center. It is the only treatment center I have ever attempted to go to <laughs> and they wouldn't have me. They wouldn't even have me. So basically what happened was when I was in college, I lived in a different state from where I grew up. I moved to a big city. About two years into living there, I definitely was becoming very aware that my eating disorder was out of control and it was taking over my life. Like I, it was to the point where I was like, I can't live unless I do something about it. And I felt as though I was so far gone that I couldn't do it on my own, which is one of the main reasons why I ended up moving back home, which is something I never thought I would do, but it's something I had to do for my life. <laughs> I was determined not to leave the city. I was determined to graduate, get my degree, all of that. And I didn't want to leave my friends, but I'm realizing now, looking back, the life I had made was barely living because I was basically killing myself every single day with the way I treated myself. So in order to stay in the city, I was like, what I'm going to do is I am going to graduate and then check myself into a treatment center. And I'm going to find a treatment center in, in the city and I'm going to stay here and that's that. And I told my mom that I think I need treatment. I need more than just willpower at that point. And she definitely thought, I don't know what she thought, to be honest. And so she always suggested just like go to therapy and stuff. But I felt like I need more than that. I need to be like kept away from the world and the influences around me. I need to just like lock myself away and figure this out. I always had this like vision of just being locked in a like in a room like in a hotel and just not leaving and just I won't leave until I've figured my shit out and I thought you know better yet maybe a treatment center might be better where like professionals are there who like deal with this every single day and might be able to give me a little bit more insight than me just locking myself in a room. And so I found a treatment center that specialized in well, eating disorders and addiction, and they had inpatient treatment and outpatient treatment. So I thought that's good because I need at least one of those. <laughs> and it was relatively close to where I was living. It was actually in the next, like I lived in the most northern part of the city before you get to the suburbs. It was actually in the most, in the suburb that was like north of where I lived. So it was just like a train ride away from where I was living so I could go check it out. Well, I didn't have a chance to go check it out. Instead, I just contacted them and I was like, listen, I am dying, <laughs> basically. I was very dramatic, but it's true. Like I was just like falling apart and I was like, I need help. And I didn't hear anything, I didn't hear anything. I emailed them because I don't like talking on the phone. So they finally emailed me back and they said that we they would wanna schedule a time to call. And I pretty much was like, oh, I'm pretty much free whenever. And of course they, <laughs> they chose to call me while I was on a train at rush hour on the way home from school with all the commuters and like all the business people like we're crammed into this, like into a train, like squished together. And I'm on the phone talking about how like I'm killing myself and I'm like trying not to draw attention to myself, but like, kind of hard to do when you're trying to describe your bulimia to someone on a phone over the phone yeah so that was cool they were asking like what type of eating disorder I had when did I think it like developed and what have I done in the past to like what kind of treatment have I sought before I remember telling them like I'm pretty sure I've been anorexic since I was like three and they were like what like I'm pretty sure like that's crazy to hear like I know it's it's insane but like you just don't make that up and if you do you're a sick person like I was just like yeah I'm pretty sure I've 
I've been anorexic since I was three. I have a problem with bulimia now. I pretty much hate myself. <laughs> like I'm giving them all the things that should be like this person is like desperate for help. To be honest, I don't really remember the conversation because it was so weird. And it basically ended with them saying I wasn't a good match or something. I was like, how? How am I not a good match? You treat people with eating disorders. I have an eating disorder. I am perfect for your center. I don't know if they didn't take me seriously. They didn't think I was serious. Or like I was just like, it was a prank. I don't know. And I think that's really shady because I think you should always take things like when it comes to mental health and physical health seriously until there is nothing serious to be concerned about. Like it's just not gonna work out. I was dumped by a treatment center before they even had me. So this really like hit me hard because it was like a treatment center doesn't even want to fix me. Like why should I want to fix myself then at that point? I think it was all for the better. Like it was for the best because I needed to come home. There are reasons why like I see now why I needed to come home. I see it now that I did need that rejection I guess and just to, to be able to come home and be surrounded by my family and the people who support me and that I think was it was necessary to be closer to home and closer to those people like my family. I think they were just shocked that I had like I was so forward with them and I was like I wasn't no one else was like saying this girl needs treatment. No, I was the one who was like, I need treatment. Like I need help. And I don't, I know for a fact, like that's very uncommon. <laughs> like you don't hear people being like, I need help. And it's serious. It was the same when I went to the doctor, when I thought I might be depressed in high school, my doctor was shocked that I was taking the initiative to come in and be like, listen, I need to be tested because I am so sad that I want to die. I think there might be something wrong with my brain. <laughs> like, she doesn't see that. She didn't see that before from like teenagers. Usually teenagers try to hide that kind of stuff because they don't want to be like an outcast or shunned or like looked as weird or dark or emo or whatever. But I mean, I was already all those things. So everyone knew. So I, there was no like hiding at that point. But I think also in this case, because I feel like it's the stereotype that when it comes to treatment centers or like rehab and stuff like that, Usually people try to commit other people like family members are like you like give them an ultimatum of like going to treatment and stuff and I'm sure it's very rare that it's the actual person who's like hey sign me up take me lock me away fix me why are there trucks driving around right now it's so loud the other thing that probably like made them think it was a little odd was well, I was on a crowded train and I just like, it was really hard to talk, but I didn't want to like have to call them back. I don't like to talk on the phone anyway, so I don't like being the person to call. I like people calling me, so I'm forced to talk to them. It was really awkward. I'm like trying to be quiet and they're like, I can't hear you. And I'm like, yeah, because I've got like five businessmen smooshed up against me and they're giving me really weird looks. And the mom in the corner with her like four-year-old daughter is not pleased with the things I'm saying. I can tell on her face. And the cute like guy over there probably who was you know looking at me before is now looking at me in a whole different way like oh my gosh this girl is sick and I'm over here like lock me away take me away uh, but I probably should have just gotten off the train and waited for the next one and just finished the conversation but I didn't think of that then and again I was smushed I was squished between people also I remember one of my really good friends was on the train with me and she was just laughing the entire time so that probably did not help my case either with like laughter in the background and me telling that person to stop laughing which probably made the person think it was a joke thanks for that but it all worked out because at the end of the day I am here I am doing better if I had gone to treatment, I don't know what my life would have been like. I don't know what inpatient would have been like. I don't know what outpatient would have been like. I know what therapy is like. I did that, but that was for other reasons because I am one messed up person. But yeah, that is the story of how a treatment center for eating disorders rejected me 
who has an eating disorder. Yeah. I'm over it now. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. And if you have any comments, questions, or video suggestions, be sure to leave those in the comment section below. And I will see you next time. Bye.